Hey, let's fix this door. I'm going to show you the three simplest ways to fix a door that is hitting or rubbing at the top of the jam. And if you try the three fixes and they're not working, contact me in the comments. I will help you get your door squared away and stick around to the very last fix. Some real MacGyver meets James Bond type stuff. Not going to want to miss it. So the door is hitting over here on the top side of the jam. You can see the gap over here is quite a bit bigger than the bottom. So the door is kind of tilted down. So the first thing that you're going to want to check here is this top hinge. Is it loose? So open on up the door. Let's just see if you can tighten those up. That one tightened up pretty good. And now this middle one here is just spinning. So what you're going to want to do there is just take the screw all the way out. Yeah, so what ends up happening, if the door takes some abuse, some slamming, I'm not throwing any judgments out there, but yeah, these screws into the door can get stripped out. Grab a toothpick, stick it in the hole. Depending on how stripped out the screw is, you might need two toothpicks. I'm going to start off with one, stick it in there, break it off, and then put the screw back in. Now for something like this, you probably don't want to use a drill. Just use a hand screwdriver. That way you're not going to strip it out even further. So that is nice and snug. Oftentimes that's going to solve a lot of your door problems. Let's have a check on that. So it's definitely better. The door is closing, but you can see the gap here is still extremely narrow compared to the strike or even the bottom of the door. So let's move on. Now this is the magic bullet solution, something that's worked for me at least 30 times over the years. This will work by itself in a lot of cases. Now what you want to do in order to suck that door over and straighten out this gap, open up the door. You're going to take a long screw, like a three inch screw or a two and a half inch screw is going to work great. In terms of the head size, you're going to want to match it up with the size screw that you have taken out of the door. It's going to depend on the hinges. So you can pull that screw out, take it to the garage or the hardware store and try to match up the head size. So the theory simply here is to just suck this over by using a longer screw and putting it into the framing. You're going to want to take out the back screw. These two screws up front here on the hinge, you're not going to hit anything. You're just going to be going into the drywall. So take out the back screw and then just angle it slightly in towards the framing. And don't get carried away when you're putting this screw in because if you snap the head off the screw, you're kind of screwed. <laughs> So that went in quite nicely. It definitely sucked it over. Let's check the door. Yeah, the door is looking considerably better. The gap is starting to even out. It's not quite there yet. Let's try one more fix. If a hinge gives you attitude, you're gonna wanna give it a bend. So for this next tip here, this is pretty cool. I've used it like two or three times and each time it's made me look like a genius. So I'm happy to pass it along. Now what you're going to want to do is if you notice these hinges, the gap spacing here between the plate and this plate is quite a bit bigger than the one on the bottom or even the middle. So what you're going to want to do is remove the pin on the top of this door. Probably your best bet is another door pin if you have one laying around or some type of a screw bit can work. I have this Robertson bit that works perfectly and a hammer. So just go ahead and remove that top pin. So in order to get this door perfectly aligned, which would be somewhere right around there, you'll notice that the loops on the hinge on the door part here are past the loops on the jam. So in order to get them lining up, we're going to need to take these door loops and bend them towards the door. And then that way, once this sucks back in with the pin, it'll be perfectly lined. To do that, you're going to need a crescent wrench, not necessarily one this big, but it does help to give you a little more leverage. Take the crescent wrench and you want to just snug it up this way. You want to have kind of the moving part 
pointed away from you and this part of the wrench over here, snug it on there and then just bend that loop over. Now the distance that you want to bend it is about the distance that you want to suck this over. So it's going to be about a sixteenth of an inch, maybe slightly under. So bend all three of the loops, try to bend them all the same. It's a little bit of trial and error. A little bit more on the top one there. So go ahead and put that pin back in there. And now the easiest way to do this is just grab onto the knob over here and then line it up and it's just gonna fall pretty much into place. You might need to bang it once it gets down here. So that's all back together. Now, if we're looking at this gap, it is 100% perfect. It's even all the way. The door's swinging beautifully. And if you've ever been wondering how to get professional caulking results for your trim work, check out this video right up here. What is going on back there, cameraman? <laughs> Just tasting the coffee, man. I'm getting some real notes of coffee being in here. There is something not quite right in that brain of yours. Gotta say though, that shirt is pretty sweet. <laughs> I'm a fan.